What's up, Nail Geeks? I am back with the uh, requested holiday mani and my routine. Um, it's been very requested how I file my nails and what I do for my maintenance. Um, I do this literally every week. So um, I really want to make a blanket statement before we get to the, uh, I guess, tutorial for lack of better words, um, that I'm not a nail tech. I am not professional. I am a uh, hobbyist, if you will. And um, I realized that some of the techniques that I do probably are not going to be super accepted by those that are licensed. So um, please, please take that with a grain of salt that this is literally just what I do. I have been very shy to do this video um, on my maintenance and my routine just because um, it's not professional. It's just little tips and tricks that work for me. So I really want to make that statement known that uh, while it may work for me, it may not work for you, what have you. I think um, in general, taking care of your nails and having really pretty free edge and cuticles and all that good stuff. I think it's just what works for you. Um, but again, I'm not a professional. So I really, really want to stress that like crazy. So what we're going to be doing in this video, I'm going to walk you guys through exactly what I do for my routine, including uh, cuticle maintenance, how I file, what I'm using. And this is literally what I do either Thursday or Friday night in preparation for swatching. And then I'm throwing in a little bit of holiday uh, nail art at the end because why not? It's super fun. So uh, before we get to that, um, I do have more videos. I'm currently working my tail off on my polish pickup video and I should have that fingers crossed hopefully within um, the next few days. I'm really trying to set it for this weekend uh, but there's a lot of delays with uh, the mail and everything so honestly I'm only sitting on half of them right now. So we'll see. Uh, just know that I'm trying to get out as soon as possible and I've got um, two more collections at this point to show you guys before the end of the year. So um, anyways I digress. I just you know, I always feel like I need to talk to you guys so much when you guys see my face. Um, but again, we're going to do some holiday art and I'm going to walk you real slow through my, my maintenance routine and uh, maybe it helps you guys out all that good stuff. So if you celebrate the holiday this week, I uh, wish you a very, very merry one. And if you don't, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week and it's relaxing and um, as stress-free as possible. You guys are wonderful. I think y'all are just the most positive, amazing people ever. You're so sweet. And I just thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you definitely made this year a wonderful one for my channel, for me. Um, it's awesome. And you guys rock. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay. So to start off with, uh, this is what my nails look like. Things are looking a little rough. My cuticles are pretty dry. I've got some hangnails. I'm using this, um, Pro Link Be Natural Cuticle uh, Remover. I get this one from Sally. I think you can also get it on Amazon. I'm going to link everything below in the description box. Some of the stuff in the video are PR samples, but the majority of it is things that I have purchased myself. But I'll definitely be sure to mention it on specific links. Um, there's no affiliate links, of course, but uh, just to be uh, fully honest and full disclosure. So the way I like to use this cuticle remover is I like to just slather it onto my cuticles. Just get it in there, go ham with it. I do have a mini polish bottle that I do uh, decant it in. And sometimes I'll use that if the cuticles aren't looking so rough, but this time they're, they're looking pretty bad. I've been in the lab a ton the last few weeks working on my thesis project. So I've been in gloves uh, for like eight to 10 hours a day. It's, it's bad. So basically you're going to want to let this sit. I let it sit for 30 seconds and then I go in with my glass orange stick. This one's from Live Love Polish. I love it to pieces, but I have busted the tip on the actual uh, stick pointy part of it and I need to get a new one, which will be coming hopefully soon. But this one's pretty fantastic and I cannot recommend a glass orange stick enough. It's awesome. Now, the reason why I typically reach for this specific cuticle remover is because it's pretty harsh. It's pretty strong. And again, it's 30 seconds for cuticle removal. And as you can see, as I'm gently scraping the sides of my uh, skin here, that um, it is 
pretty harsh. There's quite a bit of excess that comes up. The other ones I've reviewed in the past on this channel from um, indie brands, they're wonderful, but sometimes I need something pretty harsh. And I think this one does the job. It's gentle, um, but not quite as gentle as say the Quixotic or the Glisten and Glow that I've reviewed. Now, once I have uh, pushed back my cuticles, again, I go in and I wash with water. You don't want any of that excess sitting on your skin at all. Make sure you use soap. I like to use warm water. And then I have this cuticle nipper here. Uh, if I can be cheap about something, I absolutely will. And this one, if I'm not mistaken, came from Dollar Tree and it has served me very, very well. I think I been using this for about a year and a half now and I just go in and clip off any excess uh, skin that's hanging off after the remover again this one's pretty harsh and pretty strong now this is the part that I'm talking about that I really don't think is generally accepted I do trim my cuticles so I go in and any excess I will clip off now I'm gonna go in with my glass uh, filer. I really like the one from Live Love Polish. I've used that one for about a year and a half. And then recently from Prime Day, I did order the Mont Blue Trio set. I will link that below for you guys. I got it on a really good deal for Prime Day. And um, overall, I really like these. I think it's pretty strong in terms of grit. And um, I don't really trim with any type of clippers per se. I just use a glass file. So I've had a lot of people ask me how I shape my nails. I accidentally went in a little too ham on the sides, as you'll see in a moment, um, as I am looking at my nails at a really bizarre angle with the camera tripod in front of me. So um, in general, this will give you a good idea of what exactly I'm doing to get the shape that I have. So I go in and I have to look at my nails either backwards and forward uh, just to make sure everything is straight as I have a very strong C curve on my nails. So they're very, very curved. Uh, again, wide load nail problems. But the big important factor here is you want to get on the sides, especially if you have a strong C curve like myself. And I go in and just gently take off some of the sides and then I will kind of take the, take the filer and kind of work my way up just to kind of round off my uh, squared edge here for lack of better words. So I don't like it to be super pointed and that's because typically that's where I get uh, a snag on my jeans or anything like that and then it snaps it off. So you want it to be kind of rounded, um, at least if you're gonna file your nails like this. So again, I'm just referencing, I try to make my middle and my ring nail um, pretty identical lengths. I think it looks the best in my swatches. And then I will make my um, index finger and my pinky nail to be pretty close in terms of the length of their free edge. When I do it like that, I feel like it's pretty even and everything just kind of looks uh, pretty uniform when I'm finished. So once again, I take off length by uh, filing the tops and then I check underneath to make sure that it still looks even and then I go on to the sides. Now, um, I just want to note that honestly, I think you can file your nails Either way, and I mean that in, I've heard some people say that they only go one direction when they're filing. I don't really have a problem with that. My nails in general are pretty thick and I don't have problems with peeling. So that for myself is not an issue. So definitely take that into account if you have peeling or whatnot. I've read in uh, some forums that if you do that, if you have peeling, you'll want to go in one specific direction. But I don't really have that problem. So I, I, again, go against the grain and I'm just breaking all the rules on this uh, routine that I have and I go both directions. Now, again, on my index here, you can kind of see it. Uh, I'm just going in on the sides. I personally uh, appreciate the look of nails that have been filed on the sides. I just think that, uh, especially for myself with how wide my nails are, I feel like it just looks better. It's more aesthetically pleasing to me. And um, that's just uh, my personal preference. So basically uh, cuticle remover, file, 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 get all of that excess off. Now, whenever I was initially growing out my nails, um, it took a hot minute for me to be able to get a good free edge. But if you're just now starting out and you're wanting to get some length, I highly recommend some type of nourishing base coat. I'm gonna talk about that in a moment. And uh, you'll definitely want to file weekly even if you don't have a free edge, it's that little bit of maintenance. So once you do start getting a, just a touch of growth, at least that's how it was for me, then it's really easy 
to uh, snag that really fresh growth and you want to start getting that free edge out. Now here I'm going in with Baroness X's Tabula Rasa. This is basically uh, like a nail dehydrator. It's kind of like alcohol based. Uh, this one was a PR sample, but I do use it a ton. I've used two bottles of it so far. It's wonderful. Now, again, this is my weekly routine. So on my dominant hand, which is uh, I'm a lefty, that I go in and I will dehydrate these nails just to make sure I don't have any uh, sort of moisture on them or any water, anything like that. And these nails, so my thumbs and my dominant hand, my left hand, I'm going in with a nourishing base coat. So right now I have half a bottle of my Curality Factory Reset. Uh, I really like this one. I really, really like it. Um, I've gone through quite a bit of the bottle, but the only thing I don't like about it is that I've noticed I personally don't have a problem with staining on my nails, as you can guys can see from my swatch hand on the right, but using the factory reset, I've noticed some yellowing on my free edge. I don't think it's too big of a deal, but I do wear my nails naked a lot, so it kind of does bug me a little bit. It might be because this is a scented base coat. I'm not too sure, but um, I also really, really like Cuticula's Sink. So once I'm done with this uh, Corality bottle, I probably will be switching over to that exclusively. But uh, I overly like the way this one is. I've had quite a bit of success and growth on my dominant hand because this is the one that I'm always snagging things on and snapping them in the lab. Uh, again, I'm left-handed, so... It's definitely assisted me with protection and growth, but um, again, the yellowing, um, it might just be a me thing, my personal body chemistry, but uh, it is what it is. So here I'm going in with a cuticle oil. This is after I let the uh, nourishing base coat on my dominant hand uh, dry down, typically a few minutes. This is Royal Oil from Baroness X. This is kind of a PR sample, I can't remember. I do buy her nail oil, but she also sends them to me as uh, a uh, thank you for adminning her Facebook group. So um, it, I'm just gonna go ahead and be safe and classify it as PR because again, I don't remember if I purchased this one or not. So moisturize that up and then I'm gonna finish off with a hand cream. I recently uh, tried out Heather's Hues. This is actually my second container of her Wits lotion. I love this stuff. The scent is so awesome. Um, I've tried two of them so far and I really like the scents that she's got. And this is such a fabulous, fabulous hand moisturizer. Now, typically I will wait about an hour or so and then I go into swatching so that my hands don't look super greasy on the video. Now, going into the nail art. Uh, this one I wanted to use for literally a year. I got this in Vapid's Purge last year. I was so excited. This is Sleigh Bells and I literally have not worn it since I purchased it. It was super uh, sad panda there but um, I was so determined to be able to sneak in a holiday mani so that I could finally use it. And it definitely uh, fit my expectations. I was hoping this was gonna be a super glowy, slightly sparkly red, and that's exactly that. So wonderful formula. I don't know if she's bringing it back, but uh, if you're a cool toned red lover like myself, um, I love it personally. I'm glad I bought it. It's very stinking pretty. Now this is a uh, clear jelly stamper plate. I actually just ordered it, I think two or three weeks ago. I was so excited as I don't have any plaid images and I had to have this one. So I'm also using a Maniology stamping polish. I got this one, I think in the October box. I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. I am not a fan of this stamping polish. It's very messy because of how much shimmer is in it. And I basically made a giant mess and it dries down a little bit too quickly for my liking um, in terms of a stamping polish. So I don't really like it, but again, that's just me. Uh, but it was a really pretty color for the wrapping paper look that I was going for. Now the white here on this part of the stamp, I am using Funky Fingers. I think you can get these at five below, though I've heard they're discontinued, but it's just a regular white cream that stamps very, very well. And again, I'm using uh, the Maniology Stamper. I think they call this one the Ice Cube uh, Stamper. I recently started getting Maniology subscription boxes. Um, again, that's not PR. I purchased that on my own, um, but I like the stamper so far. I really uh, definitely feel like it's very easy to use. And then here I'm going in and just topping off with uh, Quixotic's Snowy London. I think I reviewed this one as PR 
oh, I want to say maybe it was a year or two ago. It was a hot minute, but I love this bottle. I really like this as a topper and um, it just gave it that extra fun factor that I was going for. Now the top coat you're seeing here is Glisten and Glow's Quick Dry Glossy Top Coat. This one was a PR sample. Um, again, I've ra raved about it a lot in my reviews, but also in this uh I guess, personal video of mine. Um, again, I can't stress it enough. It's a great top coat and no smearing with stamping. Now for the second nail art look that I did, I this is another maniology play. I had to have this one. So I actually skipped the November box and I was real bummed when I finally saw what the plates look like. I had to have this one. I actually ordered it last week and I was shook that it arrived in time for my holiday video. So I was gonna leave you guys with the wrapping paper nails, but once this plate arrived, I think two days ago, I was like, no, we have to do some reindeer nails. I cannot believe it arrived in time. So I'm going in with two neutral Zoya polishes and I'm going to use a light brown or a nude and a darker brown just to kind of mix it up. And we are going to do some advanced stamping. So this is pretty simple. You want to have some type of clear jelly stamper. You can absolutely do this over a regular stamper, but I think it's easier to flip your stamper over and make sure that you colored in the lines and everything looks good before you stamp it on your nails. And you're gonna wanna use a really fine nail art brush. My nail art brushes have seen some things and one of these days I will get around to replacing them. But I mean, they're still pretty functional for the most part. They're just uh, not the prettiest things, so to speak. But you want a really thin brush when you're doing tiny little images like this and just take your time. now. When I do this for uh, my own personal nails and I'm not just doing it for a video or whatnot, I have about five clear jelly stampers at this point. Um, I'm all, I have recommended the iHubis clear jelly stampers from Amazon. I'll link those below for you guys. Those come in a three pack, I think for like eight bucks. Totally worth it, they work awesome. And then I have this big one that I got from Lantern and Wren, and then now I have this Maniology one. So when you do advanced stamping, once you color in your images, you're gonna want them to dry down a little bit, just enough to where it's not gonna smear when you stamp it on your nails. And the way I like to do it is just line those suckers up, get an assembly line going, and I'll have three or four stampers going at a time. And then once I finish with another stamper, another image should be pretty dry and then I just stamp it on. So it sounds like a lot of work, but honestly, it's just the results are so cute. I think it's worth it. And if you have multiple clear stampers, uh, you can absolutely just kind of streamline the process and get all 10 of your fingers going. So the green and the red that you're seeing me color in with here, these are as Malte Stichelli stamping polishes. Um, they're very, very good for stamping, but I will say that they do get ugly bottle syndrome pretty quick, but I've never had a problem with performance on them. Now you're gonna go in and just stamp it right on your nails. The base to what I'm wearing here is uh, I Love Nail Polishes Spiced Eggnog. I'm not sure, I'm gonna double check once I post the video if this is still available in her shop. I bought this one several years ago. Um, it was a hot minute ago, but I thought it was a perfect reindeer sort of uh, background for my images. Now I'm going in with that same as Malta Stichelli green and red stamping polishes, and I'm just gonna make real fun kind of blended sort of stamp with the uh, Christmas sort of uh, saying here. Now, I really want to note that when you're stamping, especially if you're new to stamping, when you have words or lines, as you guys saw on the wrapping paper look, you want to be careful because once you set that first part of your stamper down, it's so easy to get the words or the lines to kind of move. So uh, just keep that in mind if you're new to stamping. I know it's a bit of a learning curve, but it's totally worth it for the adorable images and the nail art in general that you can do. Now, one thing I really loved about this maniology plate is that it had layering. And when I first started out into nail art and indie nail polish years ago, uh, we didn't have these layering images. So lately I've been a little obsessed with them and I thought it was so cute that I could put this adorable little face onto the reindeer and I could customize them. So um, that's new to me and I love them and I've been buying them up all over the place because I think it's such a cute idea. Um, yeah, so I just feel like, you know, I'm one of those people where I'm like, you know, back in my day, we couldn't have uh, multiple layered images on our plates, but 
it's cool. It's awesome. And I really dig this plate. I'm so glad it came in time for this video. So again, uh, in the reindeer nail art, I topped off here with night owl lacquers, patience not required, and I'm good to go. That's another uh, PR release that I've gotten. And uh, Lindsay typically sends me her top coat, but that's also because I love it to pieces. And again, both top coats I've talked about in this video, I can't recommend enough. They're awesome. So that's it. I hope I helped some of you guys, especially if you were curious how I file my nails. Again, you guys rock. You're amazing. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please like and subscribe. Thank you so, so much for watching.